How's it going, folks? My name is Nick, Auto the Garden Cats just behind me, my co-star, and this is the Tieta Permaculture Vlog. Uh, today I'm going to show you a little bit about my compost pile, what's going on with that. We had built it uh, just over a week ago, I think, um, and it hasn't quite heated up. So we're going to talk about that, talk about some solutions, etc., what could possibly be causing that, etc., so you guys understand that. It's really important to understand how to manage your compost piles and how to kind of figure out what's wrong with them if they're not quite heating up to the right, uh, the right level. So talk about that a little bit and then let's do a little bit of a uh, homestead update I gotta check in on everything it's been a, a day since I've really been out here and I just need to check in on see how things are going I have new plants in the ground uh, seedlings coming up etc so I'm gonna kind of do a general overview and uh, starting with the compost so let's get started oh and here's Otto good boy it's pretty playful this morning yeah, I had a little bit of a freak out. We were playing in the morning and then I accidentally pushed him over and then since then he's been a little a little shy and skittish. So, uh, glad to see him moving around again. All right, so let's go check in uh, on the compost pile. I'm first just gonna grab the food for the chickens since I'm, it's on the way anyway. Alrighty, here we go. Hey, mamas. Got the rooster down here. Got the twins and Henry on the uh, right near the compost pile down there. Looks like everyone's happy. So we got plenty of food though. All right, let's take a look at this compost pile. So for this compost pile, I integrate my compost with the chickens. So there's a few different reasons why it wouldn't actually be heating up. Uh, I guess I should first show you what the temperature is. So right now, all right, so this is the temperature now. Uh, this is about after about four days. So I had turned the pile and when I turned it, I added more manure because I had suspected that I was a little bit low in my overall nitrogen content of the pile. Uh, nitrogen tends to be the thing that kind of heats the pile up the most. It's kind of the fire uh, with the carbon sources being more like the fuel. Um, so you have to have a balance between the two. You can have too much fuel or too much fire, but if you had that balance just right, you should have perfect uh, temperature uh, readings and everything for your compost piles. So um, you can see the chickens love the compost pile. They love to interact with it. But one of the reasons why it might not be heating up is because as they're interacting with it, they're spreading out some of this material down here. And that's causing the pile not to have enough of a mass to actually get heat up. Um, I, I kind of doubt that that's the main reason here because I've had compost piles in here before that got up to 150, 160 degrees uh, that were about this size or even smaller um, and they had no problems at all. So I, I suspect it's not actually a problem with the size or the fact that they're interacting with it, although that will certainly cause uh, the pile to take a little bit longer to really kind of get to uh, its full potential just because uh, they're destroying it a little bit, they're moving things around, they're kind of altering it. And that's okay with me. I'm okay with a longer timeline for my compost um, if the chickens are doing most of the work for me. So that's kind of the trade-off I'm doing. But right now, after another uh, four days, I'm still under 130. It had been 130 at some point uh, when I checked this stuff. So it, 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 it has gone up to about 130. And if I pull it back a little bit right there to get maybe towards the center of the pile, we might see that go back up a little bit. Um, closer to that 130 mark, but this pile is just simply not heating up. And so you might say, what do you mean it's not heating up? It's at 120, it's over 50 degrees Celsius here, right? So that is hot inside, right? But for hot compost, I want it between 140 and 160 or between 60 and 70 degrees Celsius. Um, that's gonna be like my, my ideal temperature for hot compost. It's at that point you get the uh, breakdown of any weed seeds or pathogens or anything, any negative organisms in there. That's when they're going to start to get broken down and destroyed and uh, weed seeds will be basically disintegrated and made uh, non-usable. So um, not having the compost heat up to that, that hot temperature, I can't guarantee that I'm going to have like a really, really great compost. However, it will still compost. So um if i want to just kind of let this go and uh, let the chickens take care of it it'll just take longer to compost take longer to get to that finished compost and i'll likely have weed seeds in the pile um, long term if just assuming i manage the compost pile properly with enough aeration etc it's unlikely i'll have any sort of pathogens or any negative uh organisms just because all the aerobic organisms would outcompete the bad ones um, in, a, in a good aer aerobic uh, managed pile so 
Um, that's not the thing I'm worried about. I'm really mostly worried about, you know, the weed seeds, etc. cetera. Um, honestly, on my site, I, I expect there to be weed seeds in because my, my compost is integrated with the chickens and we throw in, you know, we throw in food scraps, we throw in weeds in here, etc. So there's always something that ends up getting into the compost. So I'm not necessarily shooting for uh, weed seed free compost, but uh, it is more of an ideal uh, process. Plus, I just like to get, know that that center of the pile got up to got up to heat, got up to a, like above uh, 140, 160 degrees, um, somewhere in between those two. Uh, just so I can kind of know in my head, okay, I've checked off those boxes. I'm managing a hot compost pile, and I can I can know that everything in that pile, any negatives in that pile, have been destroyed. So, um, like I said, you don't necessarily need to uh, necessarily get it up to that hot. It just that means that you're going to have a couple other things you have to be thinking about the whole time. So um, if your pile after turning it once, after adding more manure, et cetera, is not getting hot enough, it likely means that you just still don't have enough nitrogen. Now, I'm not extremely surprised about that fact um, because I, the manure that I used for this, I did use some nice fresh chicken manure, so that should be pretty hot, right? But uh, I also used horse manure from uh, next door, right over here. I used a bunch of horse manure that I gathered, but I gathered it right after a whole bunch of rain. Um, and it was all kind of older, uh, wasn't super, super fresh manure. So that manure likely wasn't super high in nitrogen. So the fact that that's the, the main nitrogen source I used, I'd say about two thirds or more of my nitrogen was that horse manure. Uh, that kind of leads me to believe that that was just old, uh, not so active manure anymore. Uh, not highly high levels of microbiology in there and not high levels of nitrogen in there. Um, and therefore my pile did not heat up and that's okay. That's something you learn from and something that you go, okay, what's next? How can I fix it? So the main way to fix that, especially with the pile not heating up is essentially to, uh, restart as if you're, you're starting brand new and you basically just use the pile that you have as uh, your kind of brown material, right? So you can't really, like, you can't really see it in here because it's uh, getting a little, crowded but all of this I would basically use as the brown material and then I would add in my manure uh, or my nitrogen source whatever that is in this case I'll likely use manure and then I also add in some more green stuff so I basically am resetting the pile completely as if I had not, haven't even started the pile yet and I just use all that base material as my brown uh, in this case what I'd be shooting for is about 60% brown material uh, 30% green material and about 10% uh, manure nitrogen material. Um, when I turn the pile, what I'll end up doing mostly is actually just adding maybe uh, two to four buckets or five gallon buckets of uh, manure, some fresh manure that I can find. Uh, hopefully really just to kick that, that pile. At this point, since I know there isn't enough nitrogen, I really want to like get that manure really, really up there uh, and get the pile hot so that I can know, okay, I ha now have enough manure. So. Uh, I'm gonna have to gather more manure today and, and uh, get that done. So I'm gonna do that probably off camera and I'll show you the results next vlog uh, because it's not the most fun thing in the world to watch me go scoop manure and then uh, put it into the pile. So you guys can probably figure that part out. Um, when I turn the pile, what's important is um, at this point, I just make sure that I gather all the stuff that they've kicked out. So you can see down here below the fence here, all this stuff right here, this is all material that was originally in that compost pile from when the, uh, the door was open and they were able to kind of scratch around. So anything that I'm losing from here, it's just basically taking away from my pile and taking away from the, the kind of total mass of my pile. And that's just gonna cause it to be harder for it to really heat up and do its thing. So I wanna make sure I get all the material I possibly can, make sure I'm always putting all the material back in the pile when I'm turning it. Um, and then from there, I'm just going to, uh, basically restart the pile. I'm gonna repile it, add manure all through, pretty much every layer I'm gonna be adding more manure. And then, uh, yeah, we're gonna go from there. Hopefully we'll get a nice uh, nice result. And I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, just, just really quick, uh, I've said it a few times, I think already, but it's perfectly fine if your pile fails. In this case, it's actually heating up, but it's just not getting as hot as I want it. Um, that's okay, the, the, the key is you need to learn and figure out why that happened so that you can adjust. And you can adjust not only for this time, but also for next time. You think, oh, okay, in my original setup, this is what I did. Maybe this wasn't enough. Maybe that wasn't enough, etc. Learn the balances. Learn what the recipe is because it's going to be different 
completely based on what materials you're using, what local materials are available to you, um, how hot the manure is, if you're using manure as your main, as your main nitrogen source, et cetera. There's so much to be thinking about in this, in this regard. So um, just really learning, okay, what did I do? What worked, what didn't work, and how can I adjust to fix that? So perfectly fine if you fail at compost. Most people fail at compost uh, quite a few times, including myself, uh, who has taken a, uh, expert level composting course. Um, I'm not necessarily following all the advice I got there because I'm just kind of slapping it, throwing it together in my backyard. But uh, so I, I, can't, I can't claim that they failed teaching me because I, I know what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm just not doing it. Not always. I'm doing it most of the time. So anywho, that's, uh, that's it for the compost pile little spiel. I hope that uh, helps you guys. If you are building compost piles, I have a problem with that. Um, that's kind of the the main thing I want to touch base on today, and I'm going to go and kind of work on reviving this pile uh, a bit later today. I did want to show you the progress on this bed down here. If you didn't see my video on uh, making this bed and getting this bed established, I'll leave it linked above so you can take a look at it. But you'll see right first thing, right at the front edge there, you'll see a long line of green, and that's a whole bunch of Asian greens that are all starting to grow. And it's really exciting to see that because I really wanted to have a nice, uh, nice Asian green harvest. And so it wasn't like a perfect spread, but it did a pretty good job. I'm pretty happy about it. Right here, we have chayote. And you can see I added three, uh, added three trellis posts, basically just old. Uh, these are, one of them's a papaya and two of them are from the moringa tree right here. Uh, when I was doing some pruning, I just took a couple of those sticks and I, I keep them all right here as posts for me to use for various things. Uh, it's my little uh, repository for all that. And uh, I just add these so it has something to climb up once it's ready to climb. And it looks like it's just about time. So uh, really cool to see that. And uh, I'm hoping that that will, that will continue to grow. It seems pretty happy and healthy. This is the chayote, a perennial uh, vining crop. It produces a nice vegetable. It's kind of in between like a zucchini and a cucumber, or so I've been told. I've actually ever actually eaten it. I'm sure I have eaten it, but I haven't actually like eating it knowing, okay, this is chayote, I'm cutting it up, etc. cetera. Um, but I've told it's really good and I know that all parts of it are edible, so I'm really excited about it. The other thing we got going here is this is the winged bean. So this is the, uh, a bean, it's a perennial bean crop that uh, all parts of, the, of this are edible, including the root, it creates an edible root system. And this is also one right here. So these two have taken in, in this long row. We had another one coming up right over here, but it seems to have died back. So I think that that one didn't quite take. I suppose three out of 10 isn't that bad. Um, although it, it would certainly ideally be much more than that. So uh, I can always get more seeds. And really the key for me is I'm perfectly fine if uh, a lot of the seeds don't take as long as a few of them do so I can get a crop and use those seeds as my next generation. So um, I'm okay. I can, I can wait. It's a long, a long term thing, especially with a perennial crop. Uh, like these guys, it's a long term crop. So it, it takes a little bit longer to get established and get going that's okay with me. I'm okay with that. But really excited to see uh, this progress here on this bed. Uh, you can see the winged beans here, the triote there. I have Asian greens all along here. Everything else that I planted doesn't seem to quite be coming up. There is a whole bunch of uh, amaranth starts you can see down there. Uh, let's see if I can zoom in a little bit for you guys. All those tiny little ones, not the bigger guys, but uh, the, those kind of tiny seeds coming up, those are all amaranth. And you can see some down here. This is all amaranth down here. So it seems like the amaranth might be taking. So, and I just literally sprinkled that in as a cover crop underneath all this while everything was getting started. I didn't know if it would take, I just threw it down to see what happens. And so far, so good. And I didn't even put that directly onto the soil. I literally sprinkled it into the, the deep mulch system. So uh, we'll see, we'll see how that goes. And we'll see if it actually uh, takes in the long run. And chickens waiting for me to let them out. They're quite impatient. All right, really quick, I got a couple of these tomato stars. They seem to be doing all right. This one's kind of hiding underneath this uh, sweet potato. I don't know if you guys can see that, but since I redid this bed a while back, uh, not a while back, maybe a week or two ago, um, all the sweet potato is really starting to grow like it's happy again. It looked like it was all gonna die off and I was just gonna have a kind of empty bed. I was just kind of waiting for it to happen so I can completely reset this bed, but it seems to have retaken. So anywhere you see that pink flag uh, is a uh, Roma tomato and they all seem to be doing just fine here. Pretty happy to see that. I did a nice big harvest of these Asian greens uh, for our Thanksgiving meal. And they're so, they're all popping right back. So much new growth happening on these guys. I actually have a, uh, an image of uh, right here. You can see this leaf. It is, it was being eaten by a bunch of caterpillars and I found like six of them on there. Instead of 
removing the caterpillars though, I left them there so the lizards can eat them and a few of them will eventually turn to butterflies because we love butterflies in this backyard. A couple more little looks at what's growing. See, this is uh, as much for me as it is for you uh, to see what's happening. I'm looking down here and seeing that finally, after so long, I have cilantro growing. I do have some grass that I need to remove from uh, taking over this cilantro. You can see right here, pull those out. But all that nice cilantro, finally, my lady should be happy. Bunch of cilantro up here as well. Uh, I didn't, I don't remember putting this recently. This was from my original planting, I think, but so far so good. And uh, I did put a whole bunch over here. There are some taking, you see a nice, a long row of it right there. Um, a couple of them are coming up down here. So hopefully this bed will produce a whole bunch of cilantro for us. Cause that's my, uh, that's my lady's favorite, favorite herb. And the one that we need the most of, and it's hard to find around here. So um, fingers crossed that, that we'll get that going. And let's see, we got an eggplant right here. Good, this one, it died. Wah -wah. Luckily I have more in the greenhouse that I can replace it with. This eggplant, really, this thing's probably doubled in size at least since I put it in, so happy with that one. This guy seems to be doing all right. Same with that one, and this one here, just fine. I did seed a whole bunch of other things, dill and such, into this bed um, when I planted this, but uh, I think the cat got in here. This right here, this might be some dill coming up. Um, so we're, we're just gonna have to wait to see if anything actually happens. That's about it for the update. Uh, and uh, just kind of showing what's going on, what's happening, uh, what's growing on as the, as the Pete Canaris would say in, in uh, Florida, Green Dreams. Uh, he has a lot of good information. If you are in the tropics or subtropics, uh, he has a lot of good information on plants, etc. So I'd recommend his channel. I'll leave it linked above here just so you can check that out. But uh, his kind of catch line phrase is what's growing on. That's it for me today. Hope you all enjoyed that uh, little update and a little talk about the compost and what you can do if it's not quite heating up the way you thought it would. Um, hopefully that's helpful for you and, and helps uh, lead you into making more compost and uh, continue along that journey. Uh, if you didn't see my compost, I have a whole playlist on compost. Uh, I'll leave that linked above here so you can check it out. Um, and usually at the end screen here, I link to my uh, how to build a compost pile video. So check that one out too. So. Hope you do enjoy. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for being part of my community. I'm like 100 or 325 subscribers. I just hit 300 last week. So I love seeing that number go up. It's amazing. It's, I'm really grateful for that. So thank you so much for those of you who do subscribe and uh, are, are become part of my community here. So appreciate you and I uh, appreciate everything you guys do to help me. And uh, until next time, have a good one.